Welcome back to another exciting family week in Ghana. Today is the first time seeing you on this channel. My name is Charles Entry. I'm a task consultant and I'm passionate about farming. Here on my channel, I do talk about farming in Ghana. So yeah, from my previous video, we spoke to Arnold, who is into greenhouse. This part of the video, we're here to look at what he does on the greenhouse project. To have an actual look at it, look at the crops he grow. Specific, mainly talk specifically about greenhouse farming in Ghana. As you can see, he's standing here with me. We'll try and get into the video very soon. But before we get into the video, the goal is to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of this month. So if you are watching me, kindly push the red button to subscribe. Hit on the notification bell to get regular updates when I drop this video. And please like and drop your comment as well. So join me as we get into the video. So I know yes, we are now here at like the main field where you yeah. do the project. Yeah. Where are we going from here? Are we going to yeah. one of the, I don't know, yes, uh, yeah. greenhouse to look at something? Yes. So we'll go into one. We'll go into one. Um, this particular one, we are nursing cooking bar. We will enter, we will enter there. Okay. But I want us to enter this one. Like, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the various greenhouse farms you have, like, yes. you grow different things. Yes. Different so, what do you grow? Aside the cucumber, cucumber, pepper, and tomato. These are the main crops we do. Okay. But we do. I, for instance, I love lettuce. So, I get lettuce seeds and I just nest it in the troughs mm. on the side then, for my personal consumption. But okay. others, are also, others who are also on site love the lettuce. So, I just sometimes we do a breakfast before okay. work, be, work began. Yeah, work begins. Nice. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Work and happiness. Work That's and happiness. Nice. I do, yeah. 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 Okay. So, is that only vegetables that you can grow with in greenhouse or you can do other things too? Okay. You know, because we don't use the soil medium, okay. So when you are trying to, and it depends on the root system of the plant. Okay. If you try to do a tree crop here, you are worrying yourself because it will just topple over. You understand? Sure. Uh -huh. And the height at which trees can go is not the same as what the vegetables can go. So normally the, exactly. The so it is best you do vegetable production here, and you can do a tree seedling. You can do it. Yes, you so can. Nest it or you can nest it in the greenhouse, but you can't okay. grow a tree in the greenhouse. So it's not at all. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that mostly people do vegetables. Vegetables. When it comes to greenhouse. Yes. When it comes to greenhouse. Yeah. Okay. So which which? Yeah, we are in greenhouse. First, that one. Ah, that one. This means the. Okay. This is actually my first time entering into a greenhouse. So before you enter, okay. this is a. Uh, um, uh, how do you call it? <laughs> something to prevent chemical uh, germs or something. Yes. So we call it the this, the foot bath or the disinfection pit. Okay. 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 So okay. before you enter, you have to disinfect. You my my sneakers are allowed though. Yeah, your sneakers are allowed, but you have to disinfect just to so prevent the yeah, disinfect prevent the the spread of diseases. Okay. Because I don't know what's under your feet. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'll... Yeah. Taking part and that mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Wow. So this. Uh, this is tomato. Okay. This tomato. This, you know we have different varieties of tomato. Okay. Yes. This particular. So, so the variety I know, based on previous videos I've mm -hmm. been dropping, when I went there, it wasn't greenhouse. Okay. So they just told me they have the local, uh -huh. and they have the one from Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. They, are, they call it from particular. Uh, Nabrongo. No, 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 it has a name for it, mm. but it's from Burkina Faso. Right. So those are the like main two that we have here. That's from the previous knowledge I have. Mm -hmm. And specifically, they were like, oh, in Ghana, most people normally consume the Burkina Faso one mm -hmm. because it's quite healthy. <laughs> and the Ghanaian ones contain a lot of water and a lot of things. So can you educate uh, once I'm here, the tomatoes, what type do we have? We have different varieties of tomatoes. Okay. Different, different varieties of tomatoes. I know. We're talking about the advantage of the greenhouse to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to the yeah, yeah. to the open field. With the greenhouse, I can choose to grow any variety, both local and exotic. Because, like I said, I can manage the conditions in here and get my expected results. Okay. Unlike the the open field, the exotic varieties they are known to a certain climate. They are known to a certain, a certain soil capabilities. Exactly. And they can't get it 
on the open field because most of our farmers don't even do a soil analysis before planting so we can give i can give them a very good seed a very exotic good seed but they can't reach anywhere you understand but with the greenhouse i can do it so the varieties of tomatoes mm -hmm. we have this particular one is called anna anna yes this particular anna one. spell the name anna like a n n a okay a -N -A. Anna. Anna. and we got this we got the seed from semi semi -nemis. we have different seed companies we in have Ghana, yeah. yeah in ghana 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 i only know of agri seed Okay. I don't know whether there are other seed companies. I only know. By where you get yours from, you like you. Import yeah, we import them. them from Holland. Okay. And I import from Rise One, Enza and then Seminemis for for my seeds. Okay. So we have Anna. I've worked on Anna. Like we are working on Anna right now. Sure. Yeah, work. Yeah, I've worked on Lebombo. Lebombo, <laughs> yeah. interesting name. Yeah, Lebombo, Uezo, and Manika, Leon, Randa. These are, all These are all varieties of like tomatoes. Exotic ones. Yes. And I've worked on Pai Pai. Pai Pai F1. All those are F1 varieties. Understand? So, like you said, the Burkina and the. Uh -huh, the yeah, because I know Italy. in Ghana, even on the market, people purchase the Burkina. Why the Burkina? We have, we have two various types of tomatoes. We have the beef type and we have the plum. Okay. okay. So the beef type is the round, oval, shaped one. Shaped and quite big very sumptuous very heavy okay. and uh, the plum is just straight it comes down like this like the Anna understand mm. yeah. the way it is shaped the way it is shaped but okay. the beef the beef one will work okay, I'll show you I'll show you quite quite okay. a number of the beef one in other greenhouses those they come out very big so the difference between the beef and the plum is that in terms of tonnage or in terms of weight the beef it doesn't come as many clusters as the plum would so the plum you can get about six or five flowers per cluster but the beef you can get like two or three but the fruits can even weigh heavier than the plum that is coming out like six clusters of flowers okay you understand <laughs> so with the beef i can get about four kilograms per just a cluster of fruits nice. i like the plum that i'll get like six fruits then i'll get like three kilograms you understand mm. yes okay so the local ones, do, why do you go? Have you tried local variety here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, greenhouse is capital intensive. Sure. So why would I waste my time growing a local variety? Because the local variety is already on the market. Okay. The local varieties, every variety has its characteristics. The local varieties are prone to a lot of diseases. They are prone to a lot of insect attack. And at times, so when I bring them here, and they start getting rastonia, they start getting phytophthora infections, and how am I going to but control them? Green you know, guys, they'll be controlled. So they are controlled, but when we were like coming in, didn't you open the door? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, it has a small, let me say, uh, percentage of like, exactly. failure. But mm -hmm. uh, open the door, how many is that to come? They might not even survive in here. Thank you. They might not survive in here, but they can survive. Okay. But personally, this this think... growing media, for instance, was imported. Okay. I don't know what is in it or what was in it before it came down here. Probably an insect was hiding somewhere. Mm. So, if you spot an insect and you are not able to control it initially and their infestation just grows up, you are doomed. And in fact, controlling of diseases too, we use, we use water for our irrigation, I mean, definitely sure. for, for the feeding of the plants and everything. Sometimes, even though our water is treated, sometimes there could be a bypass somewhere and you find a bacteria or a pathogen in there and just takes over the whole farm what are you going to do understand so most of the varieties that you, you, you choose okay must be the, the susceptibility of the diseases must be known and what kind of in, uh, insects it can also withstand okay yeah. personally me i i thought ghana should get to a point where all the Farm, I think you produce, you shouldn't import them. Not at all. Like tomatoes and other things. Not at all. We should grow what we eat. Like, Not at all. You get it. But well, it's unfortunate that mm. that's, that's the case on the ground. Mm. Yeah. So you made mention of something interesting. Then this is not, it doesn't contain soil. No, 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 it's a soilless media. But that one too was brought down. It was, was brought down. I was thinking normally when some of these things are, you guys normally mix it yourself here. You can. Uh, you can, you can, you can, you can do your own cocoa peat. Okay. okay, the cocoa peat, this is how it looks like. Mm. The cocoa peat is just coconut husk that has been grinded into fine texture. 
Okay. Okay. So we can how many co coconut farms do we have in Ghana here? Yeah? When we consume coconut, what do we do with it? We just throw it away. Yeah, but someone thought it wise to turn it into something better. I don't know what well I think there are a few companies who are doing I, I think Agricap Agricap is doing something like this. Cocoa peat. Yes, cocoa peat production. Yes, those of you in the diaspora want to set up businesses in Ghana, they can pick some of these things up and do it. Because I coconut plantations in Ghana, people don't do no 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 some no. of these things. In fact, there are a lot of things you can even do with coconut. There has there are a lot of things you can do, but we just just consume it and trade it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how 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 many weeks are the tomatoes we see? Here? This is almost a month. This yeah, month. A month is okay. Yeah. But how long do tomatoes normally the duration it takes for it to, As to harvest? To harvest. Yes, with the greenhouse. With the greenhouse, greenhouse okay. you control it. I so it. It so a on the sixth week, it should be so one month, one month, two weeks. You should be expecting your first harvest. Oh, okay, but on mm. the field, it takes a bit longer. It takes a bit that. longer. Sometimes three months, two months before you can even see flower production and all those. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So aside now, you're in the greenhouse. Yes, sir. Aside buying the greenhouse, does it come with all this equipment and stuff in here? So when it comes. <laughs> Some companies will just give you the structure, okay, the metals and everything. But you have to go and get your own. Some, some, okay, some will go the extent of giving you your own irrigation system and everything. So yeah. this is like the yeah. So this is where we mix uh, fertilizer and everything. Uh, so then, how do you do the watering? The watering, okay. But, if you may, but I was thinking this where the water you pump it out and you distribute to the. So this is please come in. This is a thousand liter tank, okay? Okay. That we give we give to our plants on a daily basis. So it depends on the stage of the plant and the volume of water or the volume of nutrients you give the plants. Okay. You understand? Uh -huh. So all you have to do is just fill it up and fill it up. It's already connected to a water source. So you just open it. It fills up. Then you know per your protocol. Okay, we have our own protocol we use. On the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the greenhouse, okay. okay. Yes. So, at the seeding stage, it doesn't really need a lot of water. Uh, a lot of water. So you can just give it fresh water. When you realize that the medium is wet, <coughs> sorry, it's dry, just give it more water. Then, as it starts flower production, too, you increase your nutrients. Yeah, for instance, yeah, your nutrient adjudication. Then, as it starts uh, producing fruits, too, you increase your nutrients because it is now becoming a big man. Have to increase that too. Yeah. Okay. So that same means you apply like yes, so fertilizer and that fertilizer thing. exactly. So we mix our what we do here is fertigation. Fertigation. Yes. So fertigation is fertilizer and water. So so it's irrigation. So fet and irrig. So fertigation. <laughs> yes. Fertigation. First time we're in the way. Fertigation. Yeah. So we do fertigation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's our shade nets. So it comes to the seventy thousand amount you yes. put it. Okay. Well, then it's quite, it's quite okay. It's okay. Because this alone, this irrigation system alone, it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, because we are, you might mention earlier that even the seventy thousand, it looked like it's quite. It's it's okay. Seventy thousand. Others are much yes. more expensive. Than because this this tunnel, this tunnel is very huge. I know I already mentioned, I already mentioned the names of some companies, but you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get this size of a tunnel. Mm. Okay. Uh -huh. Are this. It's very huge, very huge. So and we have thousand and twelve plants here. Yeah, yeah. We have thousand and twelve. Yeah, so about the tonnage, about the tonnage we make from from this, at least you expect four kilograms or six kilograms from each cluster. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you can see that uh, our flowers have aborted. Mm -hmm. Yes, because of the erratic temperature we had. We Sometimes, you know, right now, because of the climate change and everything, so you just be there and uh, it starts raining. And these are very sensitive plants, like almost from okay. DB. I mean, when it rains, it doesn't come here. It doesn't come here. Yeah. Okay. But whenever the plant, the plant is uh, acclimatized to the temperature. So when there's a slight change, okay, for tomato, they can hold it for some time, but for pepper, you can come the next day, you see all the flowers being aborted. You understand? Oh, okay. uh -huh. So unlike the open field, another advantage the open field has over the greenhouses, the, they have a lot of insects there, who, which do their pollination for them. 
But for here, you have to do your own pollination. Okay. okay. Uh -huh, to get your fruit. Because if there's no pollination, fruit fruit development can't be achieved. You understand? So how we do our pollination is you see when you see the fresh clusters or the fresh flowers, mm. when you come early in the morning, okay, you just shake. Just shake the flower like that. <laughs> For the pollen grains to fall yeah, in your hand. Exactly. This one, they'll be like. <laughs> it doesn't, it shouldn't fall in your hand. Manual form or? It's, uh, you know, when you shake it like that, mm -hmm. there's a transfer of the pollen from the anther to the stigma. Okay. Understand? So, just like that, then pollination starts. But there are other, like you said, it's a manual form, but there's a chemical form. We use the hormones. Nice. Yes, we use hormones. So, that one, you just pick it up and just spray it. Within three days, you come, there's food set. Yeah. So with that, even though the manual, it's mechanical, it's time wasting. You get a result, but not as compared to the chemical. Chemical. Uh, yeah. Yes. But most countries have banned the use of the hormones because Why? some people, some people inject, some humans take the hormones and inject into into themselves. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's it's, it's quite abnormal, but we have it. Yeah. yeah. So our tonnage, we can make like six kilogram from each. From each cluster as the plant grows it keeps growing and you, keep, you just keep harvesting so virtually from this size we should be aiming at four tons at the end of the cycle of tomatoes yeah four tons of tomatoes at the end of the cycle mm -hmm. nice. so you have like already markets for people who come we to already have buy it we have and it <laughs> sometimes we can't even reach their the demand their demand it. we can't reach their demand it's serious. Mm. I think now there are more expansions around, so possibly with time and growth in it. Mm -hmm. And right now, that tomato prices have gone up so high. It interests me why most individuals are not venturing into the greenhouse. In fact, greenhouse, just like it might sound lucrative, but it is not. It is not every area of that, that no. It's not. Every, it's not every area that you can establish a greenhouse. You have to check your climate capabilities. You have to check a whole lot of things, like your slope, your topography, the topography of the land. Mm. Because if the land is not slanted a little bit, when you when you irrigate or when you fertigate, the water can just get to a certain portion and it wouldn't spread across the entire farm. Oh, yeah. So it has to be slightly slope. It has to be slightly slope. It has to be slightly slope so that fertigation can be uniform. Okay. So, like I was saying. If we could really invest into greenhouse farming, Charles, we wouldn't, we wouldn't bother ourselves importing tomatoes, importing vegetables into the country. Into the country. Because just this site, just, just this particular site that we find ourselves, we have 30 greenhouses in production. So let's say 20 greenhouses, just 20 greenhouses are into tomato production, and I'm getting four tons. Per each greenhouse. Per each greenhouse. You can imagine the influx of vegetables we can have on the on the on our vegetables. I think markets. most people are not getting involved in it because of it's very capital intensive. Because for someone starting, probably started with a loan option. Mm -hmm. Some people are very risk adverse. They don't That's want to take true. that particular risk. That's very but true. starting greenhouse, just like that, <laughs> it's not easy. It's not anyway. easy. Yeah, yeah. And talking about the capital intensive, a friend of mine, he. He's called Mr. Senyo Badago. Okay. He's a master's degree holder and he came to see the structure. If I started with him here, he was like, bro, we can find a local way of doing this. The same greenhouse. The same greenhouse. I said, okay, bro, how? He said in his area, they, are, they have a lot of bamboo trees and whatever. So we studied the structure okay. and went to pick up bamboos. To do something similar. To do something similar. So we treated the bamboos. The only thing that was going to affect our, affect the structure was insects chewing the bamboo. So okay. we treated yeah, the bamboo, and we mounted it exactly. At, though we didn't get the exact structure, but we did something in nature, mm -hmm. just to pilot it and see how it goes. And we are working on it now. He's doing cooking in it, and it's amazing. It's working like normal. He's, just, he's getting the same result. And that was a less expensive. Less expensive. The only thing he had to spend money on was the trellising twine. Okay. Was the trellising, the yeah, trellising twine and the irrigation. So he has a cover over it. Everything just like this. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't affect it. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. If I get a chance, I would like. I would like to see how he did it. Sure. Sure. It's a good one. People. People 
Because something like this, something that is expensive for people. Expensive. But expensive. with the bamboo option, mm-hmm. someone can just put up something mm-hmm. and also try. Mm-hmm. The only thing is just have to control your environment, mm-hmm. make sure the sunshine and everything mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. At, so speaking of sunshine, actually I hear the sun is shining but it's not coming here. It's not coming here. I know plants today need sunshine, so plants what about what the fuck about that one? <laughs> plants need sunshine but not excessive sunshine. Okay. You understand? Yeah. When the temperature is too much for the plants, there's something called wilting. Mm-hmm. You see that all the leaves will be rolled up like that and they'll be they'll be looking so lean and skinny. Though it is it needs the sunshine for photosynthesis. But what you are giving me is too much and right now you are taking even then the water I have in me. Out of it. Out of it, you understand? Yeah, so we use this way, okay, just like you can see, our nets are transparent. So yeah. it allows the, the sunshine. And with the shade nets, it controls the rate of the sunshine. You understand? Mm, okay. So if we didn't have these shade nets, we can get our sunshine in here, but it will trap the heat inside. Mm. You understand? <laughs> even though the ventilation and everything is on point, but it will trap. So that's why we have the fans here. Sometimes the, the weather can go, so, the temperature can go so high that you have to use the fans to control mm-hmm. the temperature in here. Exactly. Exactly. I think let's let's go to the other the cucumber. Let's right? go to the yeah. Let's look at the other ones too. Yeah. So all the greenhouse we have here, they are all one particular kind of greenhouse. Yes, they are. They are, they are. We don't use any different, different, different ones. Different. Mm-hmm. Okay. For the exception of the five thousand. That's that. Mm-hmm. That's a difference. So is that a reason why you went for? Because I said you have different types of greenhouse. You have for this one, but yeah. not the other one. Exactly. But like, was there a particular reason for that? <sighs> but other ones are more expensive, or how? The environmental greenhouse, the one with the chimney and everything, yeah. it's more expensive. Mm-hmm. Yes. And like I said, it's a government project, so it's more subsidized too. Yes. But if I get money, or if there's any of your viewer who has a greenhouse somewhere and needs a manager, I do. <laughs> okay, okay. So aside like you just do your own game house, mm-hmm. you also help to farm. Uh, I help. People. I help a lot, a lot of farmers. Cause I get calls from people who are. Uh, do you have? They are setting up their own farms. Mm-hmm. Most of them are not in the country. Mm-hmm. Don't be able to help manage it mm-hmm. for them, and they don't get people. Really? Yeah. So I if you are interested, I know. I know of a very big. He's a local rice farmer. I wouldn't want to mention the name. He called me, Arnold. I've seen the works you are doing and a whole lot. I grow my rice and they just die off. I grow and they just die off. So my customers are also calling me. They need rice. I just said, where is your farm? So they came for me one early morning. I just went there. I didn't, I didn't even take any apparatus. I just passed through, walked through and I realized that this is the, this is what is worrying. So I told him to make um, arrangements for these and that and that. I did it for him. I was just here. He drove here. He brought me 10 bags of his rice. Wow. I should just share it around. 10 nice, bags, nice, nice. 10, 2.5, eh, 5 kilogram bags, 10. Price. I suggest, and give me the 25 kilo for my personal consumption. Mm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm up. I'm up. Okay. So those watching us, if you have a farm, you need someone to probably supervise it for you while you're not probably in Ghana or something, you can contact him. I'll drop his contact yeah, in the comment section so you yeah, can. As I said, do you do any other thing, any other thing, business or anything that you need probably people to come and invest or? For now, to find out about okay so my friend i mentioned his name mr senior Badago. we yeah. have an open field farm at Dodua okay. and a miniature local that we are we are we are now taking data and compare to this so that we, if we can get invested so we also venture into that so that is basically what i'm working on right now but i also offer consultancy advices maybe you come to me i'll help okay. you out yeah. okay. okay but do you need investment with a greenhouse to people want to probably invest who doesn't like investments? <laughs> Who doesn't like investments? Who doesn't? Yes, I'll be I'll be happy if we can spread the gospel of greenhouse farming in Ghana. I'll be very glad, very glad. Okay. Yeah. okay. So um, I don't know. I think going through if you draw the curtains on the video here. Okay. Because basically, the aside green farms, so aside the cucumber, you have pepper. pepper yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's tomato, cucumber, cucumber and, pepper. and pepper. Yeah. This is life, oh, my brother. This is life. And when anytime I enter the greenhouse, I find solace. I don't know. I'm happy. Not just the greenhouse, but anytime I visit any other farm, I'm mm. happy. Because we eat every day. 
we eat every day. So if we don't have these vegetables, if we don't have our tree crops, we don't have anything, how are we going to survive? So anytime I see plants, I see life. They say water is life, but this is also life. We can't drink water our, ent <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. our entire life. Yeah. Food, food is very necessary. My brother. Mm. More youth must uh, get or venture into agri. Agree. Doesn't matter what you do. Mm -hmm. It might not even necessarily be the full time thing you do. Exactly. You can be working on the side and also mm -hmm. get involved in uh, the farming. farming. Mm. Yeah. But I don't lie, I'm amazed by what I've seen today. <laughs> they always say, if I had the opportunity to get a drone to show people what I've seen here. <laughs> Man, I'm hoping like more youth watching us will be motivated by this. As you can see, I'm, I'm using handkerchief. Yeah, it's very hot. Yeah, yeah very it depends hot. on the time of the day too. Yeah. Of late, yeah. the way the sound scratches in Ghana, I see yes, it's not easy. <laughs> so yeah, we were getting this on the video here today. Uh, if you are motivated by it, if you need any information, anything, I'll put an contact in the description and also in the comment section. Pin it in the comment section. So any information you want to find out, anything or we didn't cover that you want yeah. to ask to, you also drop the comment or you also give him a call. He can, uh, he's willing and able to assist you with that. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. So if you're watching it, kindly subscribe, push the red button by subscribing, hit the notification bell to get a glad that when I drop this video. And also let me know your comments in the comment section. All right, catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Charlie. Just for the internet.